For our homework tonight, you are going to be finding the GCF using the slide method that we talked about in class. Um, so if you're struggling with your homework, I'm going to suggest that you get your notes out from today because we're going to be following these five steps. And you're also going to want this list of numbers here as well so that you can go back to those and refer to those as well. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and start us off by reading the directions. It says find the GCF of the following sets of numbers using the slide method. Write GCF equals with the answer and then circle your answer at the end. Use your notes as a guide. Um, I'm only going to do about two or three of these problems and then I'm going to let you finish out the rest because you're only doing eight of these slides. So I don't want to do all of them for you because I want you to be able to practice as well. So I'm going to start us off with by writing the numbers up at the top. The numbers we always use are 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, and 13. Remember, if I write it, you write it as well. So I'm going to start off by trying number 1. Um, so I do that for my first step is place the numbers in the slide. If I go back to my steps, it's place the numbers in the slide. So the numbers are already separate for you, so I'm just going to draw the slide. The second step in my note says find the common factors using the list. This is the list right here. What numbers, what, what factors do these two numbers have in common? Um, I know that both of these numbers are even, so I can start with 2. If I do not know if 2 will work, I can take my calculator, figure it out, and do 24 divided by 2, and I get 12, a whole number. And then I want to make sure 10 and can be divided by 2 as well, and I get a whole number. So that's going to work. So I can use 2. So then my third step is to divide. So I'm going to go 24 divided by 2 is 12. 10 divided by 2 is 5. All right. So step 4 says you're going to repeat until there are no more common factors. And a way we can check to see if there's no more common factors is, are these two numbers back to back on the number line? If I start counting 4, 5, do I go to 12? No, I go 6. So these are numbers are not back to back on the number line, so that doesn't work. Did I hit the number 1? Is there either one of these number 1? No, they're not. So I'm going to come back to my list. Are both these numbers have 2 as a factor? Well, 2 is a factor of 12 because 12 divided by 2 is 6, but 2 is not a factor of 5, so 2 won't work. So then I go to 3. Is 3 a factor of 12? Yes. 3 times 4 is 12. Is 3 a factor of 5? No, it's not. So then I go to 5. Is 5 a factor of 12? No. Is 5 a factor of 5? Yes. Well, it has to work for both of them. Because it doesn't work for both of them, 5 doesn't work. I don't need to keep trying these numbers because these numbers are bigger than my smallest number. If my numbers, I, the number I use cannot be bigger than my smallest number inside the slide right now. So I can't go any further than 12 and 5. That's as low as I can go. So the GCF, so how do I find the GCF here? Well, my fifth step says, does GCF draw a G on the left side? We're supposed to multiply the numbers inside the G. Well, because there's only one number inside the G, then 2 is my greatest common factor. So the GCF ends up being 2 for number 1. Um, I want us to go and come down to... Do, 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 do. Let's try um, number 2. Okay, we'll go ahead and just try number 2. Um, my first step is to draw the slide, and my second step is to find a common factor. So I'm going to start with 2. Well, both my numbers are not even. 18 is even, but 21 is odd. Because they're not both even, 2 is not going to work. So I'm going to go ahead and jump to 3. Is 3 a factor of 18? Yes. So I'm going to put 3 on the outside. If I didn't know, like I said, you can go back and you could divide it out on your calculator. 
So 18 divided by 3 is 6. 21 divided by 3 is 7. So then I go to step 4. Step 4 says I'm going to repeat until there's no more common factors. I have to ask my question, are my numbers back to back on the number line? Well, these numbers are back to back on the number line. So that means I am done. I can't go any further. So that means I'm done. So I'm going to, I can go to step 5 and draw the G. And there's only one number inside the G, so there's no multiplication. So GCF is going to be 3 for 18 and 21. Last one I want to do, I want to skip down to number 8, 21 and 49. Those are not the most friendliest numbers we've ever seen, so I want to try this one. So for 21 to 49, I'm going to draw the slide, and I'm going to see what common factors do they have in common. Um, they're both odd, so 2 is not going to work. So we want to see if 3 can work. So I'm going to put do 21 divided by 3. I get the whole number 7. 49 divided by 3. I don't get a whole number here. I get a decimal number. So 3 is not going to work. So 5. I know 5 is not going to work because well, 5, when you skip the count by 5, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, they either have a 5 or a 0 at the end. And these do not have a 5 or a 0 at the end. So 5 is not going to work. So then I can try 7. 21 divided by 7 gives me 3. Then I can try 20, 49. 49 divided by 7 will give me 7. So we know 7 can work. So I'm going to put 7 out on the side and go to step 3 and divide. 21 divided by 7 is 3. 49 divided by 7 is 7. Are these numbers back to back on the number line? No. Did we hit a 1? No. So... We can ask ourselves, are these numbers going to work? Well, look at your smallest number here out of the two. Three is the smallest number. So the only numbers we can try off of our list are two and three. Is two going to go into three? No. Will three go into three? Yes. But will three go into seven? No. Because if I do seven divided by three, I get um, a decimal. A repeating decimal. So this is as low as they can go. We can't try 5 because 5 is bigger than 3 and that's not going to work. So once again I'm going to draw my G and get my GCF equals 7. Now if I had more than one number right here then I would have to multiply these numbers together to get my GCF. But because the 3 that we did they only had one number then we didn't have to multiply anything. But if you go back to your notes and you'll see how we had a 2 and a 3 right here, then you would um, multiply those together as well because you had to keep going until you um, got as low as you can go because with 3 and 9, that wasn't as low as it could go. So we had to go again, and so we got 1 and 3. That's it.